So what are the rules of the money game? He says, I have a job in the Marine Corps. He says, that's not learning the rules. Anyway, I can get a job. But if you like money and you don't know the rules, then you don't really like money. So when you guys went to Dubai, where were you at at that time when you went to Dubai with us? We could, Financially, in yeah. every possible way. The crazy part is we could barely afford a free trip. What made you want to choose PHP over all the other options that you had? Because people were wanting to get you guys to go to their company. Why'd you choose PHP? It was like, it was the, the culture we're looking for, the environment, the people, everything was it. How did you get into the financial industry? How did that go from Marines to financial industry? So it was completely by accident. So I was a single father. I just went through a divorce, going, uh, taking my boys, because this is before cell phones. I was going to get my pictures developed at the local Walgreens. <laughs> One hour express service. I went down to the Best Buy. This is, I was in Southern California. Oso Parkway exit 405. There's a Best Buy there. And I am taking my boys to the bathroom. And somebody interrupts me. And Patrick, listen, if I don't know you and you're another guy, I like this like violates a man rule. Like if I don't know you're another dude, dude, don't talk to me, <laughs> right? And so he starts asking you questions. Hey, uh, you a Marine? You know, because obvious high and tight. He says, no, I can tell by the way you walk. Okay, you definitely you don't say that to me in the bathroom, right? <laughs> <laughs> he interrupted me and then he, he knows by the way I walk I'm a Marine. But then he asked me some profound questions. So what are you gonna do? Are you, are you gonna be a Marine? I said, I'm gonna be a lifer. I love the Marine Corps, right? Because we're, we're programmed to do that. I'm gonna do 20 years, I'm gonna do my time. <laughs> And they said, well, well, I'm just curious, do you like money? I'm like, yes. He says, do you like a lot of money? I says, absolutely. So well, what are the rules of the money game? He says, I have a job in the Marine Corps. He says, that's not learning the rules. Anyway, I can get a job. But if you like money and you don't know the rules, then you don't really like money. So he's challenging me on mm -hmm. my understanding. Yep. So if you want to learn money and how to have an alternative career outside the Marine Corps, here's my card and let's, let's, let's connect. I, I run a financial firm in Anaheim out of uh, Brookhurst um, La Palma exit, mm -hmm. and let's have a conversation coming down to my office. And the crazy part, Patrick, I never called him. Never called him. It was in my breast pocket the whole time. I wanted to call him, just never had the confidence to do that because I lacked, I said, what do I know about the financial industry? I don't have a background. Matter of fact, I just went through a divorce. I'm absolutely broke. I, what, what, who am I to help people with money? But he had need not called me to follow up with me three months later. Now, now let me ask you, how did, how did you guys get together? How did that happen? What, what, you mean, what, well, his man, version's different than mine. Let's but. hear both of them, how did it happen? So, I went to go help my mother during nurses week. And I was helping her do a financial workshop for the nurses. And I'm setting up, of course, I'm naturally late. <laughs> she, she keeps me short, short, short on time. I get there, it's supposed to be at eight o'clock, get there at noon, right? And. Uh, I just thought that nurses wouldn't be able to see me during normal shift time. You see me during the lunch break. That's what I thought. That's how I was processing it. And so I looked to my left and I see Sheena. Boom. So I said, all I saw was hair. Right? I saw her, like this profile right here. That's what I saw. Like, damn. And so I looked to the, right? <laughs> right? I love, I love her profile. Like this profile right here. I love this profile. Oh. And so. And so I, t I was setting up with the doctor. He was doing a uh, health stress test. And I was doing a financial stress test. And I said, oh, I'm, listen, if you're not going to, he was single too. I said, if you're not going to talk to her, look, well, coin flip, go talk to her. And I, I said, I went up to her. I said, excuse me, miss. They're feeding people. Would you like to get some food? She says, that's okay. It's just for the nurses. <laughs> right? For the nurses. I says, so I'm, I'm, I'm prospecting, right? So I'm qualifying. <laughs> so what is she? What is she? Because somebody, I eventually learned mm -hmm. sales. And when I learned sales, which is a skill set that you always talk about, I had confidence. I had zero game in high school. Because I learned entrepreneurship and sales, I had some, some game, right? So I was oh, so she's not a nurse. So I said, well, then what is it that you do? She said, oh, this is what I do. What's that? I sell hospital beds. Oh, interesting. Oh, I don't know if somebody sold hospitals. She goes, what do you do? I said, oh, uh, I'm here with a doctor buddy of mine. We're doing a, oh, are you a doctor? Uh, is she trying to qualify me after she gold digging? I was going just on? asking. Right? She says, ask. And she says, uh, I'm, no, I'm not a doctor. And so, you know, the chiropractors have that scale, that, that spine in the hips. So I picked it up. I said, I'm not a doctor, but do you like to be manipulated? <laughs> you literally said this. He literally said that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yep. 
Well, it worked. <laughs> and you remember that? Oh, I, because typically my personality, I would have been like, you know, slap somebody. <laughs> but I literally, I laughed. That was my initial reaction, so. But what he didn't know is I saw him before he approached mm. me. And, and, I, and I don't remember his face. I just remember this, this feeling that came over me. And I was like, what the heck, Sheen? I'm like, get, get over here. It's like, why are you feeling like a little high school school girl right now? <laughs> And so I was, I was so nervous because I literally thought that, okay, I, I found the one because I've never felt that way before and I think I found the one. And I was like, please don't approach me because I'm so nervous. So when he approached me, like the only reason I was asking questions because I was just deathly afraid I would say something I would regret <laughs> because I was so nervous. So it was good, he, it worked. How quickly did you guys go on your day? Was it pretty quick? Like no, no, I, I wanted to wait, I wanted to wait. So I was a single mom. And this was the first guy I would have ever entertained to actually date just because I was so protective of my son. So I wanted to wait a week because I knew that my initial reaction was, this is a hot guy and we're all in emotions right now, but I want to make sure this is substance. Mm -hmm. So I forced him to wait like a week because I wanted to kind of test out how serious he was. So I left the hospital and within 20 minutes he calls me. And this is, this is how you know Matt likes social media because He's like, his version of calling me was, can you FaceTime me? I mean, I just met you. <laughs> so he I want to see her again. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I was just like, no, you can't. You can't FaceTime me. And so he would call me for a week straight um, every morning in the middle of the day and at night. I was the last phone call. Seriously? Seriously for a week. So that's what, that's what got me right there. Every day in the morning, persistent. middle of the yeah, day and at night. Mm -hmm. Wow. Legit, respect. <laughs> so when did it get serious? I think when we went to Hawaii, or before that. I think for me, what, what really sealed the deal was seeing how he was with my son. So when... Mm -hmm. That looks good. I think I knew he the one because I come as a package and that little boy is the world to me. So when I saw that he loved him just as much as he loved me, I knew that was my final decision. So you guys, did you start the business together at that point? Are you guys doing a business together or not yet? About six months. Six yeah, months. Yeah, not so much. I mean, he was in the industry already, and he was established. And I, when I started, which is like, I understand when couples are in business and trying to work together, it's so important that you build your identity separate. So I would go in there and just try to do my own thing just to see, you know, if I can really do this, you know, without depending on anything from him. And I learned a lot about it. and. Um, at that point, right when we were getting it going, we were starting to work together, is when, you know, the worst happens. We got everything taken away from us, and I didn't agree with it, and I didn't like it. But I understood um, at that moment, because I, I remember being so crippled by what happened to us, and I didn't understand it, but I knew that one thing I did trust is that nothing happens without a reason to it. There's a purpose for it. And I would remember uh, when we had that, you know, fateful meeting, you know that meeting I'm talking about, and I, I, uh, once we got home and, and once it sank in that what are we going to do, Nothing, they, they just took away everything, everything that we just worked for, they just took it away and, and it caught us so off guard, it, it took the rug right out from our feet. And I was so angry because I earned that stuff and that was ours. And I was devastated because I'm looking at, at one end, uh, how are we going to take care of my, our, our son and our family, how are we going to do all these things? And I couldn't even take the pain. It was, it was so dreadful, that pain that hurts so bad that you literally feel like you lose entire hope. And it was going for three days straight. And I remember him on the phone. And, and he'd be like, I'm gonna, we're going to find what our thing is. And he'd be on the phone just calling and calling and calling. And every conversation he had, I was like, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. Because I knew the next decision that we made was so critical. And then I remember I just couldn't take the pain. And I went to the, the bathroom. And I, I got down on my knees and I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you on this one. It hurts really bad. I'm trying to trust you. And I just need you just to give me some relief in my heart and just tell me that there's a sign. Like there's something that you're pushing us toward for a bigger person. Please, please just give me a sign. And I'm, I'm not lying when I say this. Literally two minutes later, you called him. 
Wow. Two minutes later, you called him. And, <laughs> and it, and it, and it wasn't just you calling him, it was the conversation that you had. And it was like, it was the, the culture we're looking for, the environment, the people, everything was it. And the mission, the crusade, it was just everything was aligned. And then the biggest game changer was <clears throat> you actually wanted my opinion on something, which, you know, before it was just kind of Matt, 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 Matt. And it was no opinion from me. I'm just there to, you know, stand next to him. But no, you said, no, my voice mattered. And then you actually had Jennifer call, Jennifer Bet David. And Jennifer called me and I'm like, wait a minute, like, you, you mean you're an actual couple that works in the business? You guys each separately have your own thing. I said, that's it, it's over. I said, you give us an opportunity, we're going to make you pay for what you did. Crazy. What made you want to choose PHP over all the other options that you had? Because people were wanting to get you guys to go to their company. Why'd you choose PHP? It's funny, friend, army veteran, Richard Love, he says, you know what, I've been talking to this guy, and he's at this company called PHP, you might want to check him out. And naturally, I googled PHP and did some research, and I realized, oh, that's Patrick Bedevi. He connected with me. Okay, no problem. I shot you a, a Facebook message. Literally, within 30 minutes, you call, and, and then she prays, and then you call me. And so what made me, I did a video of the 10 reasons why I chose PHP Agency. And I would say the, the major difference would be, one of the first questions I asked you uh, is, number one, can I brand? Because I realized that in today's marketplace, there's two brands. That's your company brand as well as your personal brand. Right. And I wanted to make sure that I can attract people based on my personality, based on my brand, to build the company that I'm building. Right? And so the first question I asked right away, within a half of a second, you said, absolutely, you come over here and you co-brand. And then number two, you, and, you, and you double it down with saying, by the way, we have stock equity ownership over here. Here's something you can own. You just don't build a brand here and build a company. Mm -hmm. You can own a piece of this. Right? And then the third one was the multicultural diversity that she felt very comfortable with. Because every time we, we Google companies, the, demogra the, the cultural and ethnic demographics of the typical insurance would be a 70, 80 year old Caucasian male executive. Yep. And every time I'd call, sure enough, there, there's, mm. there's the, the voice. And then when you called, I remember her on the couch because she was filling up the pillows with tears on the couch. I had you on speaker. And she picked her head from the couch. She goes, Babe, I have to talk. Said, ask him this question. Babe, I think that's the one. I don't know what it was. Her discernment, I don't know. It, that's the one. And so and the fourth thing I would say, it's probably a God thing. I don't know what it is, is that pull? Maybe it's that, that hand in the PHP logo just pulling me to, to PHP. Maybe it's, maybe it's obviously, but... Uh, but, but I, I, I remember the first time we did FaceTime, Sheena was standing in the back, and I think Rich may have been somewhere as well, but Karen was there. Correct. I remember Karen was there. And Sheena's just looking like this, like, <laughs> where's this guy? And she's, she's looking at me like a detective. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm going at it. And uh, from there, uh, we established a relationship, and you guys went from where you were at. And I remember we were in Dubai. Okay, and I called you guys and I said, listen, you guys do the following thing. We're going to figure out a way to get you guys to Dubai. You flew out to Dubai, brought a couple of my friends. I was telling my friends, there's this couple that's here that I think they're going to do good things here. And she said, oh, really? I said, yeah, these guys are doing great things. I said, let me introduce them to you. I said, so these are the guys. He says, Patrick, you sure they're going to do good things? I said, yeah, I'm telling you, they are. He says, buddy, earlier yeah. we were in the elevator with them and it was so awkward. They were screaming at each other the entire time in the <laughs> elevator. We couldn't wait to leave. <laughs> we thought they were going to. I said, what are you saying? He says, Pat, I'm telling you. This was on. So then he brought it up to you guys. He said, we were in the elevator with you. It was very uncomfortable. So when you guys went to Dubai, where were you at at that time when you went to Dubai with us? Mm. We Financially, in yeah. every possible way. Emotionally. The crazy part is we could barely afford a free trip. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> what the heck is that all about? And we land in Dubai. We go to the Atlantis. I'm like, sweetheart, we made it to Dubai, right? We're at the Atlantis. Everybody's checking it out. Everybody, everybody, for me, coming back there, everybody looked like an Eric B. and Rakim video, right? Everybody's driving Lamborghinis, <laughs> the, the, the chic uh, uh, gear. And babe, let's get a martini. She goes, babe, we don't got it. We don't got what? We don't have 20 bucks to buy a martini to celebrate our arrival in Dubai? For this <laughs> company page, she says, we don't got it. We're waiting on a direct deposit. So let's go up to the room and drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> like he was so, no, he, this, is, this is where opposites are perfect because he was like this visionary that always spoke the future and I'm more the realist that lived in the present too much, which is not always a good thing. 
So he was like, oh, we're going to Dubai, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but we don't have money. Like, I want to make sure we make it back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so every, every he, said, he said a really profound thing. I, he said, we need to go just to uh, fool ourselves on what our future is going to mm. be like. That's what he told me. And I said, I'm okay, I'm okay with that. I get that because I need to fool myself right now too. Because uh, looking at that bank account was not making me feel better. And so we went, and I remember what made me so upset because I was, we were checking in the hotel, we were waiting on this direct deposit. Uh, you guys had called us down, we were, gonna, we were gonna go as a group to hang out with you know, people that I was like, oh, there are people that are successful here, like we gotta, we gotta hang out with them, we gotta sell the dream. <laughs> you know, we can't show this side of us uh, that we're really broke. And uh, he had found Kahindi Thomas at the hotel. And they went into the guy's spa area and if you know anything about Hinde and, and Matt together, they can talk for five days straight. <laughs> so they, they got caught up in the moment in the, the guy's spa, and I couldn't get a hold of them. And I said, we need to be downstairs. So he, he comes finally back. They had spent like hours talking and chatting and just having a good time. And so I'm, one, I'm balancing the fact that we had no money. I didn't know where we were going on a, a group trip. I didn't know if we had to pay for something, so I was panicked about that. And then my husband comes in, he's just happy, you know, a carefree, no worry at all. I wish I could be that way. And, and so I just like let it loose, like everything that was inside of mm. me, which is not okay, you just take it out. I just didn't realize those are your friends on the elevator. 